is the season to talk about board games. Today, we are talking about my number 60 through my number 51, which will round off the top half of my top 100 game list. To bring us, to start us off, we have The Golden Ages. The Golden Ages is a wonderful piece of game design. It has this nice technology building. You're trying to be, a, you're, you've got this efficiency engine you're building, you're setting out, colonizing, you're building the world as you go, you're claiming resources. It's also one of the ugliest games I think I have. Look at this horrible artwork. I mean, I don't know who did it, but this is just an ugly game. Also, the components are beyond cheap. I mean, it's Stronghold games, and I don't want to disparage them too much, but they don't ever go all out on component quality. But in terms of a solid game design, the Golden Ages is fantastic. It's not too long. It works well with two or three. It is just a fantastic experience, as long as you can get past how ugly it looks. That is my number 60, the Golden Ages. My number 59 was my introduction to Polish designer Ignacy Trzyzczyk. <laughs> um, this is the second edition, but it is called Stronghold. Stronghold is a game that I've been playing for years. One person plays the role of some knights in a castle, and they are, that castle is under siege from a horde of orcs, goblins, and trolls. And the orc, goblin, and trolls are controlled by the other player, who's trying to just breach this castle wall and lay siege to this stronghold. And it's a nice back and forth. Everything the invading player does gives the other gives the defending player more time and that gives them more options. And so it's an interesting balance between doing a lot of things or doing just enough so that you can make sure that you're fast enough that the other player can't respond. As the defender, it's super stressful because you don't know what's going to come and you don't know if you'll be able to do any do what you need to do. But it's just this interesting back and forth. This is the second edition again. It's actually a nicer Stronghold game, surprisingly. Um, but it's um, it's just a lot of fun for two people. It doesn't work with any number other than two. And there's also an expansion called undead but i don't think they've made it for the stronghold version i hope they will someday i still keep my old version in case i want to play that because that gives the invading player a bunch more options which is even more fun uh, that is my number 59 stronghold my number 58 is a game that could be described as racism in a box what you do is you lay out a lineup of a bunch of different people and then you're trying to narrow down the subjects, almost like guess who, except for instead of does she have glasses, you're saying does she exercise? And then you will look at all these people and eliminate the people who are fat and look like they don't exercise. <laughs> or, you know, does this person watch TV? Well, no, she's too old, she doesn't own a TV, that kind of thing. It is a lot of fun, especially if you're going to play with people who are just going to let their inhibitions go and say all the politically incorrect things that they know. In fact, if Donald Trump were a board game, it would probably be this one. Uh, it is a lot of fun. It's a hilarious time. I don't think I've ever seen it misfire as long as you play with people who are going to let their hair down a little bit. Unusual Suspects, my number 58. My number 57 is a game that I have taken all over the world with me, literally. I mean, look at this box. It is falling apart at the seams. This is Agricola. Agricola is kind of the the first in this the modern series of modern wor worker placement games where you have to feed your people. Essentially, you are a subsistence farmer in the Middle Ages. And I know that does not sound exciting, and it is not exciting, but it is a lot of fun to play. You're trying to survive. You start out with almost nothing, and you're trying to work your way up to a stone house with a pasture full of animals and a field full of grain. And you've got all these little, you've got just 14 cards, and each card gives you a different special ability that you might choose to trigger or not trigger. It is kind of brutal, and there are some times where you're thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to feed my kids? Are they going to have to starve to death? But, and I know that's not a charming feeling, but in this game, it just works so well. It is sort of a, you know, there are other maybe feature people games that do it a little bit better, but this one is still my favorite, and there are so many expansions. 
Uh, the craziest one is, of course, the Legend Dairy expansion. Dairy like where cows are. And it has elves and werewolves and things like that in it as your occupation, which of course goes super well with subsistence farming. But it's a lot of fun. I, I, I used to take it, I took it to Budapest with me when I lived there and we used to, my friends from, from the university would meet up in a cafe and we would just play this for hours. I played it with my family, they loved it. Everyone I've played with really likes Agricola. It can be mean and nasty and it's best with two or three, but it's still a great game after all these years. Number 57, Agricola. The next game on my list is actually two games. It is King of no Tokyo and King of New York. I'm only showing King of New York. King of Tokyo is back there on the shelf. But they're basically the same game. You, It's kind of like Kaiju Yahtzee. You are rolling these dice and you're trying to make a set to make you know just the right thing you want. You might want to attack. You might want to buy these upgrades. It, I think I like New York a little bit better because you've got these these invaders, you've got these buildings you can destroy and then they turn into invaders and attack you back and it's a little bit faster. But I, I like both games and there's a ton of expansions, a bunch of different monsters and there's some special powers that's in one of the expansions that you really have to play with because you just really need it. And it's just a fantastic game. It's a great intro game for people who haven't played a lot of games before. It's a great way to show them, oh my goodness, games can be a lot of fun. And I have played it lots of times, and I don't think I've ever seen it misfire. This is King of New York or King of Tokyo. They're both pretty much the same. Next game is a small, light game. <laughs> this is anachrony. This is a heavy game, literally. It weighs a ton because I've got this wooden box insert in there. But it's a game where you are... Yeah, the theme's a little tenuous, but you're you're working you're you're sending out these workers to these different spots on this planet. And these workers are in these big old mechanical ships. I guess like robots, I guess. And sometimes you have to borrow things from the future. So you might borrow some water from the future. You'll have somebody send it back. But then when you get to the future you have to repay it, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to send it back, and so it creates a paradox. It does this weird little time travel thing that's going on. It's a kind of a brutal game. If, if you get behind, you can really get behind. And there's a lot of rules to it, so I wouldn't recommend it to everyone, but it's a lot of fun. It, it works together really well. And it is a game that I always look forward to playing. It also works pretty well solo, which is always a plus, but it also is good with just about any number. And that is my number 55, Anachrony. Let me set this down here. <laughs> My number 54 is a much smaller game, First Class. First Class is by the designer of Russian Railroads, another great game. In this game, you're building your either train or your train route or some combination thereof and just trying to score points. Basically, the theme of this game, get points. You want to get points, get points, get points. And there's a bunch of ways you can do it. You can focus on different things. Each round, it's you're, you're going to take just one or you just just you just take one card from a row and play it there's not a lot not a lot of of heavy hard decisions but there's enough that you can sort of say i'm going to focus on this and i'm going to make it work and you can just get this engine going that can build lots of points for you there are five modules in the box i've only played with four of them one of them is a murder mystery and i haven't played with that one because it's a little bit harder to teach to new players but the other four work really, really well together. You can play with any combination of them. And someday I hope I'll try the murder mystery as well. But I, I always look forward to playing it anytime I get a chance to. It's super fast. And it's a lot of fun with any number of players. That is my number 54, first class. My number 53 is a game that is not violent at all. Cash and Guns. Cash and Guns is one of my favorite party games. I, or one of my favorite memories is playing it with my grandmother, who's in her 80s. Uh, what you do is everybody has a foam rubber gun. In fact, I can show you inside the box. It comes with a bunch of guns. And you've got a pile of money on the table. And you've got a pile of, you've got a stack of some real bullets and some fake, you know, clicks, just a, a blank. And you're gonna choose whether you're gonna chamber a real bullet, which you only have a few of, or a fake one, and then you count to three and everybody's gonna point their gun at somebody. 
and then you're going to stare that person down. And that person has a chance to hide under the desk and be safe, or to think, ah, bring it on. And then you'll reveal, if you get shot, then you don't get to share in the loot. If you hit under the desk, you don't get to share in the loot, but if you stayed in, and then you take turns taking this loot, and you're trying to have the most money at the end of the game. Of course, if you get shot too many times, then you die, and you're not eligible to win, so that's unfortunate. But it is just a lot of fun. I remember every time I played it, it people just immediately get into it. I mean, these, these foam rubber guns are not all that high quality or anything, but they, are, they bring the theme to the table immediately. The second somebody gets a gun, they start pointing it. They know immediately what to do. Caching guns works for a party. It works for a big group. And it is a lot of fun, especially with people you know really well and have just always wanted to shoot. I'm not advocating violence. Just a thought. Uh, my next game... That was weird. I apologize. My next game is another party game that I just adore. Happy Salmon. Happy Salmon is probably my favorite game just to play with anybody. It is super simple. Basically... You give everybody a hand of action cards, and they have to either give you... And, and so they're trying to find somebody who has the matching action. Either a high five, a fist bump, which is called pound it, um, to switch places with somebody and run around the table, or everyone's favorite, you stick out your hand and go like this. <laughs> it's the happy salmon. And all of a sudden, you have a bunch of adults standing around going, switcheroo, 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 <laughs> trying to get somebody to find their same, uh, their same action card. It takes about a minute to play, literally maybe two. It's a lot of fun. You can play it in two different ways. You can play it where you're shouting, and you can play it where you're silent. And so you'll see a bunch of people going, <laughs> try, frantically trying to find somebody to match with them. My favorite time to play it is late night at a gaming meetup or a convention where somebody next to you is playing a really heavy game. Because they're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, what am I doing? Those people look like they're having so much more fun than I am. This is a game that you'll play four or five times in a row. I love playing it with my kids at church. I love playing it with my workmates. I've, I've, I've just never seen this game go wrong. It is fun. And every time I've played it, I think somebody has looked it up on Amazon and immediately purchased it. It's also super cheap and a great gift. My number 52, Happy Salmon. And the last one today, uh, very Christmas themed, I guess, or not at all, is The Sheriff of Nottingham. I love games where you lie. This is a game where you are going to look somebody in the eyes and say, I am telling you a lie. That's not what you'll say. You'll say, there are only four apples in my bag, four fresh apples. Everybody always does a fake accent like that. Um, you'll role play it up. And meanwhile, what's really in your bag is a bunch of contraband. And you're trying to smuggle it past the sheriff. And the sheriff has a chance to open your bag and try and catch you red-handed. And then you have to pay a penalty. But if he does it and you weren't telling the truth, then he has to give you some sort of a penalty. It's not... And there's negotiation that can go on. You can make promises and break them. And I never win at this game because I just always lie and people always know it. And I always get caught. But actually what really happens is I pay out too much in bribes and then I don't have enough money at the end of the game and I end up losing. I don't think I've ever won this game, but I also don't think I've ever had a bad time playing it. It is just essentially a box full of fun. My number 51, Sheriff of Nottingham. And that, my friends, rounds off the top of our list. We have done 50 games already, and we have 50 more. 50 games that are better than these 50 games, which were already just top of the line. I hope you'll join me for our next installment, and I hope you've maybe seen something that you want to try in my top 100 games list. Thanks.